Vietnamese desserts are quite a world unto themselves. Within the same bite, you can actually find chewy, gooey, and soupy. This is why today we're gonna attempt one of the locals' favorite, bun chui hup, which literally translates to a steamed banana cake. Now, don't get confused by the name. There is no yeast, no eggs involved. And prepare yourself for a banana coconut tapioca delight. Chewy delight. This recipe is pretty straightforward. For the main cake, you'll need, guess what, bananas, but not too ripped because you'll want them firm enough to handle a few manipulations, but you don't want them so young that they'll make the cake bitter. Slice up your bananas. I'm using three large ones, but in hindsight, should have used four. I personally prefer this dessert packed with fruit, so it's really up to you. Add two and a half tablespoon of brown sugar and a pinch of salt. Mix everything together such that every banana slice gets its share of sugar. And set the bowl aside for 15 minutes. There's a bunch of things you can do while your bananas rest. For one, start boiling some water, and while you're at it, take a snap for the gram. Also, prepare your cake containers. I'm using a round ceramic pan, which requires a bit of art and craft skill. Fold and pour a piece of parchment paper. Position the main folded corner in the middle of the pan and mark visually the edges of your pan on the parchment with your fingers. And then cut one inch above the visual mark. There you go, easy round parchment paper. Use a bit of vegetable oil to stick the paper to the center of the pan. Um, if you have any issue, just add more oil to force the paper to stick to the pan. Also, cover the inside so that it'll be easier for you to remove the cake later on. By the way, it's really up to you what shape you want your banana cake to take. Whatever container you're going to fill your banana goodness with, just make sure that you give them all a good brush um, of oil. Back to our bananas. Grab your measurement cup and add two thirds of a cup of tapioca starch to the bowl. Fold the bananas over such that everyone is well covered. And then Pour in 210 milliliters, or the equivalent of a little bit less than a cup of boiling water. At first it'll look like a mess, but keep folding all the ingredients together until you get a smooth mixture. Adding food coloring is optional, but if you do, don't put more than a single drop of yellow. And then fold again. When pouring the cake mix into the pans and containers, avoid filling it too close to the edge like I do. Uh, the cake will actually grow a little bit in size and you don't want the banana cake too thick. <laughs> On to our steaming equipment. I'm using a fancy three-tier stainless steel steamer. Um, that's the wrong bottom. Haha! -ha! Okay, now we're talking. To avoid water condensing under the lid, we're going to wrap it into a kitchen cloth that will actually absorb the water evaporation and stop water from dripping on our cake. To speed up the process, I like to add already boiling water into the pan. Put the cake into the machine, add the lid, and this baby is gonna move to my main kitchen stove. While it steams for 20 minutes, we're going to tackle the coconut sauce. Before you turn the heat on, add three tablespoons of sugar to a pot, one teaspoon of kosher salt, one and a half tablespoon of tapioca pearls. And to make sure the sauce somewhat thickens a bit, one tablespoon of tapioca starch. Give a good swirl to all our dry ingredients and then move on to adding the wet folks. Find your coconut can and pour it completely into the mix. Use one cup of water to clean the can and then pour everything into the liquid. Drop a tiny bit of vanilla extract and then on a medium high heat, continuously stir to ensure that the pearls don't stick to each other or to the bottom. When things start boiling up, stop the heat and then let the sauce rest with a kitchen towel on top for 15 minutes. 
Again, the fabric will avoid all the condensing water from dropping back into the sauce. The sauce itself will still look quite a little bit liquid, but don't worry, it'll thicken up after cooling down. Now, let's check on our skimming cake. Poke the cake with a toothpick. If it doesn't come out clean, your cake needs to steam a little bit more. Let's do a second quality control. Success! Nice and chewy banana cake ready for consumption. Not so fast, this cake needs to really cool down before you can do anything with it. Smells bananas. Mm-hmm. A hot cake will stick to the paper, so this baby is going back into the fridge. To ease the unpacking process, put a little bit of water on the tip of your finger. That'll help. Look at this wonder! Super flexible, still holds together, and with a beautiful shining top. Wow, wow, wow! This cake is sticky, so use a plastic knife or cover your sharpest one with a plastic wrap. In Vietnam, this dessert is mostly served in small diamond shape, so uh, we'll try that. Our coconut sauce has thickened a little bit, but if you leave it two more hours in the fridge, it'll be even less runny. Drizzle as much or as little as desired on top of the bananas and finish up with a few sesame seeds. This is gonna be a good dessert. All right, shall we taste? I'm gonna take the end piece. Uh oh, sticky. No shame, I'm digging in with my hands. There's no time for fancy cuttery. Ooh, beautiful color, super flexible texture. Mm. You know what's fantastic about this dessert is the banana still retain their shape. Like you chew into a banana, which has a very soft and mushy texture, compared to the tapioca all around, which is super chewy. A very fun texture contrast. Mm. This is a party in your mouth. There's so much things happening. There are the banana, then there's the tapioca. Don't forget about the coconut sauce and inside the coconut sauce, tapioca pearls. Yeah, so we just counted four different kind of texture in your mouth. All right. Mmm. And it's really not a sweet dessert, so you could actually um, eat the entire cake by yourself in one seating. So, that's it for this week's recipe. Let me know your thought. Do you even like banana cakes? I love banana cakes. But um, let me know if you like banana cakes or not. If you don't, mm, no big deal. If you do, you gotta try this banana cake. Thank you for joining. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and on this, I'll see you next time.